The upper limb houses 30 skeletal bones, comprising of the humerus of the upper arm, the radius and ulna of the forearm, the eight carpal bones of the wrist, the five metacarpal bones of the hand, the proximal and distal phalanges of the thumb, and the proximal, middle and distal phalanges of each digit. The skeletal bones are bound together by a complex system of ligaments. The muscles of the upper limb can be separated into layers depending on their position and the type of movement they create. Carpal tunnel syndrome involves three major flexor muscles, generally regarded as being in the second and third layers on the anterior side of the arm. Flexor digitorum profundus flexes the distal phalanges of the medial four digits and assists with the flexion of the hand. The flexor pollicis longus, which runs down the anterior side of the ulna bone, helps to pronate the forearm, i.e. rotates the radius so the palm is facing down. Finally, the flexor digitorum superficialis flexes the middle phalanges of the medial four digits and acting more strongly, it flexes the proximal phalanges and the hand. Other muscles on the anterior side of the forearm include the pronator quadratus, which pronates the forearm, flexor carpi ulnaris, flexes and adducts the hand, Palmaris longus flexes the hand, flexor carpi radialis flexes and abducts the hand, brachioradialis which helps to flex the forearm at the elbow during pronation, and finally pronator teres which pronates and flexes the forearm. Muscles on the posterior side of the forearm include the extensor digitorum, which extends the medial four digits and extends the hand of the wrist joint. Extensor indices extends the second digit and helps to extend the hand. The extensor pollicis brevis extends the proximal phalanx of the thumb at the carpometacarpal joint. Extensor pollicis longus extends the distal phalanx of the thumb at the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. Extensor carpi ulnaris extends and adducts the hand at the wrist joint. Extensor carpi radialis longus helps to extend and abduct the hand at the wrist joint, as does the extensor carpi radialis brevis. The extensor digiti minimi extends the fifth digit at the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. The abductus pollicis longus abducts the thumb and extends it at the carpometacarpal joint. The anconius assists the triceps in extending the elbow joint, as well as abducting the ulna during pronation of the forearm. Finally, the supinator supinates the forearm i.e. rotates the radius to turn the palm anteriorly. Although the median nerve innervates certain muscles of the hand, none are directly linked to the cause of carpal tunnel syndrome. It is, however, often the repetitive movement of the digits that can cause the injury. The four palmar interosseous muscles adduct the digits as shown. Posterior to these are the four dorsal interosseous muscles which abduct the digits. On the anterior side of the hand, the four lumbricals arise, which flex the digits at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extend them at the interphalangeal joints. The abductor digiti minimi abducts the fifth digit, i.e. the pinky finger. Comprising of two proximal attachments, the adductor pollicis adducts the thumb towards the middle digits. The next set of muscles comprises of the adductor pollicis brevis, the flexor pollicis brevis, and under that the opponent's pollicis, which all together make up the muscles of thena eminence. Hypothena muscles integrate the flexor digiti minimi, the abductor digiti minimi, already shown, and the opponent's digiti minimi. Held together and attached to the bones by a tough layer of ligaments, the thena and hypothena muscles are joined by the flexor retinaculum, or transverse carpal ligament, which in turn is attached to the carpal bones of the wrist and forms the roof of the carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome is one of the more common and often more serious cases of a repetitive strain injury. The more common cases are found as a result of day-to-day -day tasks such as writing or typing, where the hand and wrist can be placed under strain from awkward positioning. The median nerve is one of five main nerves originating from the brachial plexus of the neck and runs down the length of the arm. It is the only nerve to pass through the carpal tunnel and give sensation to the first three digits and half of the fourth digit. The median nerve can become squashed as the surrounding tendons swell from stress and overuse. With extension and flexion of the hand and wrist, the muscles and tendons are put under strain, especially during long repetitive movements such as striking the keys of a computer keyboard. 
As the simulation shows, with awkward positioning of the hands, flexor tendons that run through the carpal tunnel move and start to swell as they are put under pressure. As the tendons swell and move, the space in the carpal tunnel decreases and eventually the build-up of pressure on the median nerve causes numbness, pain, and in more serious cases, the inability to grip objects due to weakened muscles in the first four digits. Generally, the injury will subside with rest and relaxation of the wrist. In worst cases, however, the pain may be too much and an incision in the transverse carpal ligament may have to be made to release the pressure built up in the tunnel.